Well, each sprite also has its own settings, which you can set for individual instances of that sprite. And those you can see in the inspector here. There are things like animation, material settings, other things like that. So let's just look at a few of these quickly and, and see what, what they do. So we've got this play animation on start. I'm going to look at the animation settings first because they're a little more straightforward. They may, the main settings are pretty complicated, and I'll go through those in a minute. But let's just look at animation settings first. So we have play animation on start. These are very similar to the way Unity's animation system works. So if you play an animation on start, that means whatever his default animation is, which you which was set in the in the editor there, the default animation will play when the sprite is instanced or when gameplay begins. Play default anim when idle means whenever an animation is no longer playing play that default animation again so in this guy's case his stand animation is his default animation so whenever he's done animating like say after a punch he'll go back to playing the stand because play default anim when idle is set we've got so let's just play this here we've also got playback speed so playback speed is a way you can change the speed of the sprite animation globally for that instance and you can see now he's moving up and down really quickly because I changed the speed this will affect all of his animations so if he if he were to walk he would be walking fast if he were to punch he would be walking he'd be punching fast there are also settings you can change via scripting for where you can change the speed of the individual animation so you can make him punch faster one time he can punch slower another time it depends you can set all of that as you will that can be useful for changing the walk speed like say you want him to walk slowly when the player presses lightly on the joystick controller uh, or make him walk faster when the player presses harder on the joystick you can do all that by changing the speed of the individual animations but this playback speed setting here is affects all animations in the sprite so we also have animate off camera this this uh, allows the sprite to continue animating when it's not seen by any camera if you want to uh, disable this he'll stop animating when he goes off camera saving a few processing cycles it's not that big a deal but there might be some reason you might want to stop the animation off camera default animation override is a setting that allows you to change the default animation for that specific instance of a sprite so right now the master sprite is set to use stand as the default animation but if we want this instance to use run as the default animation we can set it right here press play and he now runs as his default animation so then we got right here the drop down that shows you what animations exist in this sprite this is just for your reference so you can uh, remember the names of the animations and use them in your scripting then we have material set material settings here and the first one is material set so material set as I mentioned earlier is is a uh, it allows you to create materials for this sprite and switch to them on the fly and let me just show you how that works and be more clear this sprite currently has two material sets which I set up before in the editor let's go show you that so if you click material sets you can see it has the default material set which is just the regular sprite material, default sprite material that it comes with. And then I created a test material set. And this test material set is using a material I created called test right here in the project. So the test material is just a, it's, I used a particle shader. So you need to use a material that has a underscore main text property, which uh, will have the the atlas will be assigned to that main text property so any of unity's shaders will be fine for that they all have a main text property as far as I'm aware and so I just chose the particle additive shader for uh, just for this example and changed the tint color to red so you can see something's happening and I dragged this test material I created onto the source material for that material set and then 
So now the sprite has two material sets. One is the default skin and the other is this test shader. So if I go and choose that sprite, go back down here and select test as the material set, you can see nothing happened. Well, it can't show you the material set change in the editor, but in when the game is playing, you will see the material set is different. So right now the material set is set to test and it's using a particle additive shader. You can see this character is semi-transparent red. If I change material set back to default, you can see he went back to his his old material. So the advantage of material sets are you can have let's let's disable this sprite just for for a second. So the advantage of material sets is you can have multiple copies of this sprite and as long as they're all using the same material set you will get they will be able to be batched together so you can see these three characters have one draw call they're batched together because they're sharing the same material on disk there's not been any instancing of materials happening here if I were to change these characters to default to characters material set to default you can see now we have two draw calls one draw call for this guy for the guy on the left and one draw call for the two guys on the right we go and we change all of them back to default material now we still have two draw calls now we have one draw call so that's nice now if we were to not use material sets uh, and instead apply a material directly to these characters which you can you will not have that advantage of draw calls but you have the ability with this other option here material override this allows you to apply a material at any time to a sprite any material as long as it has a main text property you can apply it to the sprite and it will create the right materials from it and apply it uh, apply the atlases and this is useful if you have like say you have many 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 different sprites that you want to apply the same material to for some effect and you don't want to go and predefine those material sets for all those sprites you just want to you just want to apply that material and have everything display that material and you're not really uh, uh, concerned about uh, the extra draw calls that will be incurred because when you apply a material through material override the material is instanced for each instance of the sprite so if I were to apply this test material to this sprite and apply this test material to this sprite and apply the test material to this sprite and press play they will display correctly but you will notice we have three draw calls they can't be batched together because it's creating an instance of that sprite in memory an instance of that material in memory for each sprite instance so it can be convenient if you have an effect you need to apply to lots of different sprites and you don't want to predefine the material sets but it can but it will take more draw calls if you have multiple instances of that sprite on the screen so in general if you can use material sets you you probably should because it'll save draw calls which are you know important for cell phones and such so let's get rid of these other copies of the guy and go okay so here we see we've gone over the animation settings and the material settings let's look at the main settings now so we have one setting called self update self update means the sprite will run its own animation update cycle the the sprite script has an update function which will run all the animation to keep to make the sprite update every frame now that may or may not be desirable you may have some need to update the sprite on your own timing or update the sprite in in another uh, update cycle like fixed update or late update you might want to be able to pause the updates of, of the sprite so if you need any of need any of that functionality you, you should disable self update in the sprite and, and add a sprite updater to the scene so in sprite factory under under prefabs there's an object called sprite updater let's drag that into the scene and we get we get this sprite updater that appeared and it 
just it is responsible for updating any sprites that are assigned to it on whatever cycle you choose. So you can choose the update cycle for this for this sprite updater here. Tell it do I, do you want to update in the update loop or the fix update loop, the late update or manual. Manual means it doesn't update until you call an update function manually on the sprite updater. But for now we'll just try the update cycle. We'll go back to the sprite and you need to assign the updater to the sprite. So this field here, sprite updater, let's drag the sprite updater into this field and now that sprite updater will be updating this sprite. If I press play, he updates. If I take this updater out of this field, he doesn't update anymore. He's no longer animating. So, okay, the next option is billboard. This is useful for if you have a uh, effect sprite. You need it to be a billboard polygon that faces the camera all the time. Enable this. You also have a billboard up axis which is a hint up vector that that uh, it will try to align the sprites y axis to this axis whether it's on the world or you can also choose to align it to a camera axis. Um, so then so here's another option. Here's another important feature called Use Batch Scaling. So Use Batch Scaling allows you to scale multiple instance of, instances of a sprite but not waste draw calls. So if you, if you enable Use Batch Scaling, it will scale the sprite using uh, the mesh itself. It'll change the vertices of the mesh and it'll also scale any uh, colliders or locators that you've added through Sprite Factory so that you can have sprites of different scales on the screen and and be able to batch those together as one draw call. So I can show you that here if we if we copy this guy a few times and we scale him scale each copy of him a little bit So we have three copies of the guy, we press play, we see we have three draw calls. Each of these guys is the same and he should be batched together, but Unity will not batch scaled, scaled uh, objects. So if we were to go enable, use batch scaling on each of these guys, it will take this, this transform scale which you've set and it'll convert that to a mesh scale and a collider and locator scale that don't require that don't rely on the transform. So these transforms will go back to 111 but the sprites will stay the same size. You press play, the sprites all stayed the same size relative to each other and their transforms all say 111. Well, draw calls 1, batch 3. These guys are all batched together. So that that can be extremely useful especially for things like backgrounds and stuff like that. Like If I open uh, this other scene here that I have, you can see this scene is made up of a bunch of different parts. There's three, uh, four sky uh, meshes, some clouds, they're all instances of each other that are scaled different sizes. We have uh, some tiling hills, trees, all these flowers are just scaled versions of each other. If I press, press play, this is only two draw calls because all of these flowers, all of these clouds, they've all got use batch scaling set. And so they're able to batch all this in, into two draw calls, which is very nice, very useful for cell phones and tablets. Let's go back to our fight scene here. Turn off my other guy. So let's look at the other options here. We have scale to actual pixel size. This option would make the sprite actually scale to f so that one pixel on the sprite equals one pixel on the screen and this, this is this is probably not what you want to use most of the time this option is there if you need it but for the most for most people this would not be a good option to use on all your sprites because while it scales the sprite itself but other things in the scene will not be scaled like the distances between objects would not scale. 
just because the sprite scale, the distances between objects wouldn't scale. So that would mean physics would be different. You know, a lot of gameplay logic would be different if you were to rely on this. What you probably want instead of scale to actual pixel size for most cases would be to set make the camera render everything at their actual pixel size. So to do that I have there's a um, a sprite camera right here in the prefabs which has a sprite of sprite camera script on it and you can add that to the scene and this I already have one in the scene but this would allow you to enable render at actual pixel size this will change the camera's orthographic size settings so that the sprites would would be rendered at one pixel in the sprite equals one pixel on the screen right now it's already set to that I can show you what it does by changing this scale so I'm gonna zoom it way back so if we look at game view let's just zoom it way back that guy's tiny right so if I were to click this render at actual pixel size it'll find the right the right orthographic size for the camera that will will show this sprite at the actual one-to-one -one pixel size on the screen this this is more useful for most people this is probably what you're expecting to use to, to get your whole game to display at actual pixel size 